Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. In this episode, I'm going to discuss include OS. Description here shows literally pound include OS. And what it is, is it gives you the ability to include a header file in your C++ project and then essentially compile your C++ project into something that is bootable. Now this is needs a little bit of clarification because it doesn't like give you everything that you would expect from an operating system. There's not necessarily graphics uh, services available, uh, but there are networking services and there is some I.O. capability. So if you get a clone of the IncludeOS project, as I have here, and then you need to run sudo install.sh, and I've already done this before, so there's not that it needs to do, but it's checking to make sure that I have the correct version of Clang. It's building all of the object files that it needs to link your C++ program to to make it bootable. And then it is setting up some networking devices so that you can communicate with the operating system that you are building. So the point of this project is they, they wanted to create something that lets you make an ultra secure network service so you can make your web server or your whatever IRC server that is running as its own operating system so if anyone were to compromise your service there would be nothing for them to get to because the entire operating system is the application and it's kind of end game at that point then so what if they compromised it you simply reboot so we've successfully compiled and set up our include os run and i'm going to skip this suggestion here that i run test.sh because i've already done that before and instead i'm going to go into the examples folder and there should be a demo service. So I'm going to run this. And by running the demo service, it is going to build the service.cpp, create demo underscore service.img, which it's already done, and then it's going to launch that in QEMU. So it's actually launching a virtual machine running our C++ program. So it does the launch, it brings up the network interfaces, and it's running a service. And you can see here that our QEMU box is running at this IP address, and we can connect to it, 10.0.42, and we can see this message, include OS speaks TCP. So let's actually dig into this a little bit. So now if this is the first time you've used Q QEMU, which was the first time I had used it from this perspective, you have right now your console is basically taking up by the virtual machine. You need to hit Control A and then C, and that brings you into the QEMU monitor, and you can quit out of your virtual machine there. And as it notes, you can run your virtual machine and virtual box. So let's take a quick look at what the service.cpp is. Here's the service colon colon start. So it's creating a network interface, it is setting up its IP address, setting up some timers, and setting up its socket listeners to be able to respond to HTTP GET request. And they have much more complex examples than this, but you can see here in just a couple of lines of code, not even 130 lines of code, they've given you a TCP service that can respond to HTTP request. Now, if you are a fan of this channel, you're probably thinking what in the world does Jason want to do with this? So I went and I made this example, which is called 256 Color VGA, and it is available on the official GitHub repository for Include OS Now. I got a pull request accepted this morning. So in here, what I really wanted to do is use this as a test bed for playing with operating systems. I thought this would be incredibly awesome to just use this as a way to say, I'm going to boot my C++ operating system, and they've done the hard work for me. They've created the uh, boot code. They've set up a lot of kind of POSIX things. You have uh, accessibility to the entire C++ standard library and you can use C++14 features. So my service.cpp has two different options here, service start. 
I have a screen test and a 256 color VGA test. Let's start with the screen test. And I'm going to make it. And now this one, just so you know, was actually started from the snake example. So I've created my 256 color VGA image. It builds the C++ file. It creates uh, a bootable drive image. And now with the run.sh service that they, uh, utility that they have, I can jump into it here. And so it boots the system. And I know this is a very small window because it's 320 by 200 VGA graphics. But it booted. And then it outputs a bunch of multicolor graphics from the standard VGA palette. And I can close this just by hitting the X. So to get this to actually work, what we had to do was put the computer in 320 by 200 by 256 color graphics mode. And if you are running a 16-bit operating system, or if you are in 16-bit CPU mode, which is what any x86 today still boots in. You turn on your computer, it boots in 16-bit mode. All you have to do is set the AX register equal to the hex value 13, and then call the CPU uh, interrupt. So this is equivalent to int um, 16. In assembly language, this is interrupt 16. We're asking it to call. But we're in 32-bit mode, so we can't do that directly. So I got this routine from the internet called int32. And it is all in assembly language, and it's a lot of assembly code. But essentially, what it does is it saves the state of all the 32-bit registers in the CPU, and then jumps to 16-bit mode so that it can execute the interrupt service routine that is in the VGA BIOS to set the graphics mode to 320 by 200, 256 color, and then it jumps back from there into 32-bit mode, and our, and our program is able to continue where it left off. So if that didn't make any sense, um, leave some comments or something. I'll try to provide a few more details. But the gist of it is what we have here is this utility that says set graphics mode hex 13, which is our standard 320 by 200 by 256 colors. And then we are drawing some multicolored lines at memory address A0000, which is where the VGA's memory gets mapped to in a 32-bit mode. So we're writing directly to VGA memory. And then this wait for key is waiting for a key press. So that's something, but it's not nearly as much fun as what I wanted to do, which is the VGA 56 color test. And this one does the same thing, sets 320 by 200 by 256. Oops. And then, uh, the oops, there's still some C style code here left behind. Let's just. Let's do that, get away from some C-style cast. But what I'm doing here is this call to region calc, which is a poorly named function for generating a Mandelbrot rendering of a particular location. These are the coordinates that we're using. This is the center point and the zoom scale factor that we're using for rendering our Mandelbrot. So we are jumping in here, and we are calculating each x and y point for the Mandelbrot set. And then we, for each pixel that is calculated, we are setting that pixel value directly in video memory with this A0000 memory location again, with the x and y offset of the point that we currently want to write to. And then um, I'm not doing any palette management, and we only have the 256 color palette that's available by 320 by 200. So instead, I am just kind of mapping the RGB color values that have been calculated directly to a value between 0 and 255. And here is all of them are Mandelbrot calculation, which is code that I originally wrote 
in a little known language called Minnow. Then I ported that to JavaScript, and now I am porting the JavaScript version to C++. So now, with this code in place, and as you can see, we are able to take advantage of C++ 14 and 11 standard kinds of things. If you don't notice them here, we're doing uniform initializer syntax and doing ranged for loops in some cases and such. So now we can make the service again and launch it. And the OS boots, and we get a rendering in a 320 by 200 of this space in Mandelbrot, which is a relatively expensive space to calculate because there's a lot going on here. But it's one of my more favorite ones. With a better palette, it looks much better. So there you have it. Uh, with Include OS, you can do some real, like, playing directly with hardware kind of things, but you get to do it from your modern operating system. So I encourage you to play with this. I think ultimately what would be awesome next is if someone were to write some real Visa 32-bit uh, graphics drivers for it so we could more easily select which video modes we wanted to play with and have a wider range of video modes to work with. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.